I did. Oh, I muted it. Oh, let's turn, go. Wait a second. You can talk to them and they said sure. Oh, look at that. Let's see. Yeah, if we can get the audio from the massive laptop thing. Yeah, well, that's okay. Well, I, maybe I can hum it. Actually, no, I could just unplug this and put the microphone right there, you know. It does work. Oh, oh, Zounds, you're right. Um, uh, this is the microphone. Are you sure this is not the microphone? I am positive, but let's try the other one. Try the other one. No. That's super weird. Can you make Windows make sound? No, wait, Windows hates it. Ah. Let's try VLC, hmm? Did I mute it? I just unmuted it. That's, why would that happen? But it does, I don't see anything. Maybe I broke it. Um, well, that's kind of uncool. Usually this was also a rock. Yeah. Play anything with sound. <laughs> I had the same problem. Oh well, you know what, that's okay. I can I can just kind of do it do it vocally here, um, or I could stall. I think it's because I rode here with this in my backpack and I fell over like five times and got hit by a bus. So, you just do your thing. Um, she wrote like some random words that could kind of be things which I could I could kind of say. Um, Obviously, the super cool thing, you know, about doing doing CG and everything is that it's uh, a lot easier than doing everything in real life. Um, I'm more into the kind of imagination realization part of the whole CG thing. Is uh, I think it's cool to be able to come up with a a scene or concept or something that's in my head and then work, you know, and then ah, everybody can see it. This is that thing I was thinking of right there. And I used to do that with drawing and crap, and then. Um, slowly kind of learned, oh, you can do that with CG, and then you can put the CG with the live action, and um, it's really just been a very linear progression. But, um, but what that's, so for a long time, there was kind of this, um, boop. No, well, that was me. <laughs> for a long time, there was this, you know, there was kind of the fix it in post mentality, but, um, Recently, like especially the last year, um, since I know enough kind of what is possible, it's more kind of a doing it in post mentality where we'll have a scene and I'll be like, all right, this is the shot I want. We have absolutely none of that like actually on set, so we're just kind of filming somebody in a corner and it's like, and this whole thing is just going to be, you know, it's all going to be CG or something, which is really fun and it really, but it really depends on knowing kind of the tools and what's possible. Um, I've worked as a as a CG supervisor on a lot of sets, and it's always kind of fun just how how confusing it is for like tracking a monitor and putting new content on there. That's the easiest thing in the world, but like tracking somebody's shirt as they're jogging and putting a new logo on there, that's really hard um, to look good. You know, with everything's kind of doing that. Um, but for like most directors, there isn't really a a difference. It's like well, just putting a thing on a thing. Um, so that's always, that's being, being somebody who both kind of directs and also knows all that means that I know where the shortcuts are, um, can film things so that, you know, if somebody, like masking, Blender will soon have masking. If you film something, somebody walking, you want to have a giant robot thing behind them or something, and you don't have a green screen, if you try to composite the robot on, it'll just be on top of the footage. Um, so you have to trace around this person copy and paste, you know, think of it like in a magazine, you know, you have to cut out the person and paste them on top, you're doing a collage type thing. Um, Blender will soon be able to do that. All right, let's see if this works now. I didn't have any coffee today. Coffee? 
can I? Sure. Cool, and this just isn't. Anything in it? Black? Yeah, just black. Well, that's super weird. This is one of life's mysteries. So I'll just show the trailer thing right now. Um, wait, you have an idea? Sound card. <gasps> What's that? It's a sound card. A sound card? Yeah, just plug it in and put in your area. And you go. No way. All right, Windows is going to configure it. Just work in a moment. Boop. Boop. Is it, can I go to the sound settings for a moment? Are these sound settings? Yeah. Oh. There, there it is. Oh, unplugged a device. Yes, I did. Yeah, and now it's in the other. And now it's in the so other. I guess that, that one. Oh! <laughs> what happened? You found the sound. Thank you, Ton. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so take take two here. Let's see this beginning again. Whoa! Wait. Yeah. years ago, back before Nalardians came to Earth, Command was doing experiments unlocking the secrets of potential as part of a wee small top secret program loosely translated to Project Money. You will be my Look, I'm, I'm sorry, but that frame rate, probably nobody else noticed. No, I'll go back to where it was. Let's try VLC. But there's a room for, you know, one of the right? There we go. Back with Okay. That's bad. 100 years ago, back before Nalardians came to Earth, Command was doing experiments unlocking the secrets of potential as part of a wee small top secret program loosely translated to Project Money. You will be my beginning the last days. The potential temporarily took over your mind. Why did you think they regulate the potential so closely? They're scared. I have no idea if either of you are going to suddenly transform into giant beasts and destroy the planet. I mean, what if I do lose control? You won't lose control. Sir, the London Underground are still a threat. They're the last thing you should be worrying about. Why do you guys do it? <laughs> Why are you fighting Joint Command? Joint Command has restarted Project Mind. Do you know where they might be? If you leave here, they'll find you in a heartbeat. So you know I know this is part of the plan, getting caught. Then I'd have to figure out a way of distracting you so I can escape. Find it on the ground! We'll hide back in this restaurant and save the place. Why are you here? There's a whole fleet waiting outside to take you down. Wave the planet goodbye. So that is that, and um, yeah, I mean, we we actually in the final in the final stages. Um, I should totally mention this. Uh, we're 
we kind of were trying to balance, you know, freelance and, and personal life and um, working on the movie for like, you know, the past few years. And eventually we got super poor and then we became super, super poor. So we're running a little Indiegogo thing that um, if you search for Project London, it'll pop up and you'll see us talking about stuff. And it's cool, so you can check that out. But, um, but yeah, that's finally done. And I actually don't think anybody's here who worked on Last year there were like four. There was Dolph did some really super cool stuff. Nathan Vegdahl did some really... Super cool stuff. Um, Colin almost did some really cool, super cool stuff. Um, but yeah, I was. It's like I could I could talk forever about how how that kind of works. How we did do the feature film with like and all these people just kind of came out of the woodwork and did amazing stuff. Um, yeah. Well, what else is it? It. What's super? I'll just say this one quick thing, just because um, on the Blender artist forums, there's a a lot of people kind of trying to start, you know, completely open projects. And um, the one thing I found is that no matter how motivated everybody is, even if you have like the most awesome motivated volunteers, there still needs to be somebody there who's kind of throwing as much of their life as possible into it. Like you're never going to get a self-sustaining um, group of people who just make a movie. Um, and I say this only because I have talked specifically to quite a few people who kind of go, this is, this is their goal. They had the idea, and then they want kind of the, the, they want to kind of be the person who, you know, other people do it. And usually it's, um, I'm going to have a bit more of this coffee. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Because I started out, do, you know, helping out with, like, Star Wars fan films and stuff. Um. And every time I ever did that, it was always, um, I wanted to work with, with these cool people that I saw working on them, and I wanted to get to know them and everything. And, um, and I would help out with everything. And people would ask me, hey, can you help out with this thing? And I'd, I'd do all this work I'd send to them. I'm like, oh, this is super awesome. I get back to them a week later. I'm like, what do you want next? They go, oh, we're not doing that film anymore. Um, and so I just kind of learned, you know, I don't help out, you know, or help out with stuff after there's already quite a bit of headway going there. I have a lot of momentum. Um, and so I think, and most people kind of know that. So as much as you have to show, just kind of like, because that starting momentum is no fun. Nobody really wants to be, you know, usually wants to be a part of that. They want to kind of get on board and be like, all right, let's, what are we doing with this thing? Um, let's see. I did a, um, I don't just want to, well, I, I could, I could. Let's see. What? Because the thing that really gets me excited and the thing that's kind of um, seen a lot of the talks have been completely blowing my mind. Um, when I first started using Blender, it was uh, every new feature was kind of this entirely new world that blew my mind of like, you can do cloth sim? How did I not, you know, like edit mode or pose mode or everything. It was just, every, it was like all these doors kept kind of opening. And eventually, you know, I kind of reached an equilibrium and I just kind of assumed that all the other doors that were still closed, I could never open. Um, things like, you know, learning, learning Python or, or rigging and stuff. And um, just hearing all the talks, it's like, this made me really excited again. Because it's like, no, wait a second. I could just keep learning and um, that'd be super cool. But um, I think the, the big difference between like kind of where I'm usually at in a lot of the talks is I'm so far into the creative user end is like I don't know how anything works and um, like I like I like the infinite kind of brainstorming possibilities that Blender gives like um, I was talking with a I'll show the thing with a hat that's cool um, like we were on we were on set and it was kind of a um, my roommate has, for years, we've been talking, we go for walks every night, and we'll walk for like two, two hours, and we'll talk about ideas, and we had this project we wanted to do, and I said, as soon as Project London's done, um, now that Mango's starting, you know, I would finally was like, all right, let's spend this month, let's see what we can do. Um, so we went out and filmed, and just, yeah, the problem with doing filming is there's so many variables, specifically the, the human element. Um, we get on set, and two of the actors, you know, suddenly can't make it, and it's pouring rain, and the field we were gonna film in has been mowed, so we have to find this other field. And it turns out the replacement actor we got is allergic to grass. And I went, oh, this isn't going to work at all. Um, but let's just film it. And um, I just had him talking to the air because um, there was nobody else for him to talk to. And I just kept the shots kind of tight. I was like, maybe, maybe this will work. Because again, it's, I just had gotten so used to 
we're just getting elements, you know, at least we'll get the, the stuff in there. And it wasn't until a little bit um, later that I was in the middle of um, teaching a, a CG class, mostly After Effects, but because um, the kids were like, it was 8 to 15, and, and Blender's a little bit, you know, it's tricky to teach to a room full of 8-year-olds. Um, but yeah, and I doodled this little, this little robot wearing a hat, and I was like, wait a second. So I went back to this, and I modeled, um, actually, while I was teaching, the kids got super into it, so I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, this little guy. Um, how do, uh, there we go. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah! Just a robot wearing a hat. And um, I just threw him into the scene. I mean, it's not... Um, the, the number of clients I've, I've convinced, like, you don't want your robot to have legs. <laughs> you want him to hover is, is astounding. Um, So that's obviously, you know, just raw audio and stuff. But yeah, and I made that guy, and I threw him in there, and um, how's it? This is kind of a weird contrast, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, that's, that's just, and that got me super excited, because all of a sudden this scene that I thought was going to be, like, kind of a total, you know, total waste ended up, like, having this little film noir robot guy. Um, <laughs> and just the, the, the freedom and flexibility that being able to have, you know, knowing compositing and 3D and all that stuff kind of offers is just absurd. Like, we were, we were on set um, again, like, a, a week before that, and we were filming out in this field, and um, that's, that's my friend. Um, I normally know her name. Um, <laughs> but, we're, yeah, we're filming, we're filming out in this field, and, you know, I just took different pictures of the... RV, basically just mapped them onto a cube, and then it's like, from a distance, there you go, you have a photorealistic RV. Um, we filmed this shot uh, from the side of the RV, and you can barely see it, that's okay, because all we're getting are these window elements, and then, um, which I just mapped those onto the side of the uh, RV, moving across a plane with a desert texture on it, and using the noise modifier, I have the cube kind of rocking a little bit, and uh, I'll see, we'll see if this shows up on the projector. Oh! We'll see if it shows up. I doubt it. Can you see that? You can kind of see that. Yeah, there's little people moving around in there. And um, it's the ability to be on set and be like, oh, no, we can totally do that. Are you sure the light is uh, rolling a little bit down? I am absolutely jumping completely, completely all over the place. But, um, the what? Yeah? So that's just fun. And the fact that the RV and everything, it's like, it's basically, it really is just a cube with some stuff mapped on it and, you know, and some wheels and a plane and uh, the backgrounds, you know, you know, stuff. So it's like going from having the idea to having the shot is like, you know, you can do that in a couple hours. Um, that same... That same thing, I was um, talk, walking with my, with my roommate, and we had this idea of, like, hey, what if we had, you know, a rocket for that thing? You know, I showed you some stuff. It's like, what if we had a, a guy in a rocket boat, and he's flying around, like, shooting demon whales? And I went, that's awesome. Um, so we came back from that walk, and, um, we, you know, there's this picture of a boat on CG Textures. I just overlaid some grime on it. And this is while like, he's sitting there watching me over the course of an hour. Um, just applied it onto the side of a thing and extruded it out. And um, yeah, you can see that. Obviously, there's some, some stretching going on as it happens any time you do just like a flat projection. So um, as opposed to like UV unwrapping, which might take time. Um, I just put a lot of junk on it. <laughs> and uh, again, most of this junk is, um, I have a library of little pieces uh, that I just keep, you know, in a blend file, and I just reference them whenever I need to. So yeah, there we go. Then we have a big old cyberpunk flying rocket boat. Um, and uh, this was all over the time of, like, it's, it's super fun to do Blender with an audience, because normally it's such a solitary thing that, like, <laughs> 
when they when they when people are watching, I want to do it like a Pictionary, where you know I'll start modeling something, and I'm like, I know, like, oh, they're trying to figure out what this is, and then like I put it together, and they're like, oh, it's a rocket. I'm like, yeah, and um, <laughs> so it's actually kind of super fun. Um, so yeah, yeah, end result we just did, you know, and this was like at the end of just you know a night after a walk. Um, I think we had some beers, but. Um, over and then we shot some stuff on a on a green screen stage a um, month and a half ago, and we put it all together. I'll show this just because it's fun. Um, but again, you'll see there's nothing in here at all that like it's a boat animation, which is just basically it's rigid. It's a rigid body. You know, as long as you get the eye pose and add camera shake, you know, it doesn't. It's all about how it feels, not exactly it being perfect. You notice I haven't done any CG people. Um, because that, you know, the amount of time you have to spend to, to make a good, that scares you me. Um, and like, character animation, that takes forever. Um, for me, I don't, you know, I don't want to spend, you know, a couple months while it absolutely, completely, completely blows my mind. Um, people who do, I just, I get bored. Um, so let's see, Scott Hampson is my roommate. I forget who made those, but those are obviously awesome stuff from BlendSwap. Oh, this isn't done. Like, there's gonna be voices and there's a green, Never mind. I'll just be quiet.
And again, it's like, compared to the stuff we've been seeing, it's like there's absolutely nothing at all complex in this. But, um, like this shot right here. Like that's just a plain, you know, extruded down shatter modifier with some noise displacement with a rock texture on it. This ship going by is just, you know, two point animation type thing. So, I don't know. I just think that's cool. One thing, one thing I have found is that in terms of making realistic CG, um, somebody said this. I'm this quote, or it was just great. Is like, just it's not the imperfections that make CG not look believable. It's the um, too much perfection. And um, I mean, it's just entirely too true. The shot that looks all right, and then you add just like a just a little bit, maybe even imperceptible amount of like camera shake, as as hokey as it sounds. That slight bit of movement just makes it look twice as good, um, even if you don't change, you know, the composite or anything. Um, just because that random element, um, a little bit of grime on the lens. I mean, it's it's why we love kind of chromatic aberration. Does that because it's like each pixel is like, yeah, maybe I'll share a couple pixels next door and everything. That that little bit of blur um, is just, and a little film grain and stuff is just super fun. Um, also, if you model really, really, really quickly. Without really paying attention to what you're doing, you get that random element as well. Um, <laughs> it's like, wow, that looks all right. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, probably got other stuff. Um, oh yeah, we just uh, from Project London, we just released like all the big old 3D files. Um, Blender files, you can download, you can use them for anything. We got just an attribution Creative Commons license. Um, and they're not half bad. Like this one is, uh, boop. See, this is, Nathan Vegdahl rigged this. That means it's good. Look at that. The first one, actually, I, I completely tortured the, the man candy rig and created this haphazard, horrific thing which when Nathan Vegdahl saw it, he, he started to weep uncontrollably. No, that's not, well, it might be true. I wasn't there. But, um, so he went here, please, can I fix this? And he animated some amazing things. Um, in, the, uh, in the trailer, he did most anything that looks awesome. Um, yeah, we got this guy and these things, and you just go download them and you can use them. Um, so I think that's actually super fun. Um, is Nathan Taylor stabbing himself in the eye with a fork. I could probably, what time is it? Three of, oh, we're late. Um, Zoom, we have like question things. Yes. You're right, I should, I should have said that. None of that is composite. <laughs> Um, I know, I know, right? Because, because again, it's it's all it's all about me being lazy, um, and so it's you know at at this point, like if I want to have like I'll render an image and then I'll add some camera shake to the image and it's like to make it look like this thing is flying around. It's even if it's just like a still, you know, if you add enough camera shake, it looks like it's a. And all of a sudden you have a new shot. It's like it's hard to cut that many cores. If you want to click and drag in the compositor in um, Blender, you, you can't. Yet, yet, but uh, that's what we're going to be doing with um, with Mango. So, probably, I don't know about that specifically, but um, but yeah, that's definitely coming, and that's actually one of the things I'm most excited about for for Mango because it would be super cool to be able to do all of this completely, completely within Blender, and you probably can. I just haven't because um, I've been using the tools you know I'm I'm most familiar with, um, and uh, yeah. Is there anything else? Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot. A lot of the big. Um, those also kind of echo a lot of the big goals for, for Mango, which we're going to be having a talk about Mango quick. So I'm not going to totally. But um, but yeah, just certain things like um, obviously one of the coolest things about After Effects is the fact that um. There's all these pre-existing kind of plugins and stuff and kind of this tool set that a lot of compositors have. Um, and so until, you know, Blender has 
at least a lot, you know, of that type of stuff, and it's already doing doing great. Um, it'd be hard to convince, you know, people in a in a big production pipeline who are trying to finish stuff, you know, um, to go over and do that. But um, if you're doing all full 3D stuff, um, that stuff is super great. It's just usually when if you have little things, if you're trying to like more coffee. Mm. So yeah. <laughs> yes. Which one did I do? Like one with compositing or just full? Okay, I mean, I think the shot you're talking about is the one that's in the, the blender reel where it's flying and, and there's buildings. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a cool shot. Um, this is one of the ones where I didn't cheat quite as much. Um, where is it actually? Hooray for file organization. Come on, give me the little icons. These names mean nothing to me. Click a random one, doesn't matter. <laughs> Normally I'd know where it is. I'm just super psyched right now. Moving Audi, what is that? Oh, well, it doesn't work. Underbuilding, four. Let's try that one. Oh, yeah, this is the one. So that obviously the goal with this shot is just to throw so many details into your eyeballs that you can't tell that it is just, um, again, it's all of those, you know, you've probably seen those newspaper bins, those are, this is all just CG texture stuff. Um, I have my little library of like pre-existing ladders and lamps and, um, and uh, did somebody just get me more coffee? That is the best. Trash bags, um, there's like four buildings here, you know, and I just, extruded them, you know, or extruded a plane, you know, super quick, um, flat projection. Um, again, nothing in here is, is UV mapped. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's literally, this is playing with Legos. It's, I built this kind of Lego kit of, of stuff and I put it all together. The, um, the ship also only took, that was like a night, um, oh, I'm, it's missing some textures up there, but, um, yeah, for, for that one's actually kind of... Um, I forget if they're from CG Textures or if my friend Paul Spooner gave them to me, but somewhere there was all these pictures of airplane parts. So I put them together into that. Again, did a flat projection onto um, a plane, like used the solidify thing and beveled it and um, all that stuff. And then, bam, all of a sudden I had a, a wing and... Um, this is, you know, obviously just more kind of subsurfed stuff. Um, and then copied, you know, I was like, well, I could do those two wings, or I could copy them and have, look at that, four, this is called quad wings. And because um, I love those night projects. They can just like, I want to do this. I'm going to do it quick enough so that it kind of works. I um, feel like normally I could be more introspective about that. Um, but there, there's also a lot of, of real world observations in here that, um, that I think I do without completely thinking about it, just because those are really good for cheating. Like if you're filming from a moving car the, um, and you're holding it from the sides, you know, like typically you're gonna have vertical uh, vibrations as opposed to, you know, just any direction. So you notice this kind of is replicating that like as if it's almost mounted on the back of a car or something that's kind of bouncing. That's doing a whole bunch. Um, have lots of kind of subtle glows and things going on. Um, but yeah, the big thing, nothing. I went and I actually, somebody was like, do you want to teach a blender class? And I was like, yeah, at the end of two hours. I'm like, that, uh, that's everything I know. 
Um, like it's all just super basic. Which is why I'm, I'm glad I have very complex friends. But was that kind of what you were? I mean, <laughs> Organize. Um, well, again, for, for this right here, um, actually, let's do this shots in my in my demo reel. Um, right here, this thing, this shot. These are obviously those same. I think at this point it was only two pieces of building and some cross beams that are just moved around. You know, um, oh, let's moving on. Um, Yeah, so, and it's actually just the same file, the same blend file. I can't redo this shot because I, I did it destructively. I rendered this shot, and there's this black right here. That's hiding a transition. Then I reassembled everything, like I just flipped it, and then I had that shot, and I just hide the transition in the black. I did it again right here, and I just took like four of the buildings and made that little thing. Um, and, um, and so this, this shot was, again, like I, it's like a day and an afternoon or something, I was watching The Life Aquatic. Um, oh, but yeah, so those files are right over here. Um, 2.5, I thought I upgraded 2.6. Um, so let's append some stuff, huh? Uh, textures, library, group. Look at that, that's, that's what I got right now. I've got a couple other folders that also have things. Um, and then Let's uh, ch -ch -ch group instance. Look at all these buildings, man. Um, building front Italy. What? Building front. Let's do this one. Ch -ch -ch -ch. And uh, there we go. There's a building, and it's already has all the textures and everything on it. Um, bam. So it's like if we want to make a building, we can. The uh, for some reason this this is the coolest like laptop I've ever owned, but it doesn't have uh, a numpad, which means I can't easily change views, which is super weird. I think there's a fix for it, but I haven't found it yet. Yeah? Wait, is that a button I can just click? Oh, you. Uh, input? Emulate, oh, emulate numpad. Oh, is that me? Oh, they turned this on because I put, gotcha. Um, hey, it works. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. <laughs> well, yeah, let's just, let's just do that. And then it's like, oh, what type of, what type of roof do we want? Um, so I'll just open this back up and kind of be like, what's a flat thing? A big blue door. Then rotate it by. And this is why I, I tend to make kind of grungy esque stuff, because it's like, you know, like, oh, look at that. It's like a shanty building. Oh, let's move that camera, which I can do by hitting O as opposed to stupid menu. <laughs> we got a building. But I mean, for reals, that's the most like simple stuff. This is the mesh right here. It's just as a picture on it with a little bit of, of normal mapping and stuff. Um, the lighting is all, you know, just the environmental lighting uh, with a directional sunlight. That's all the lighting everything is. Everything is rendered Blender internal. Um, yeah. I do, yeah, I spent a lot of time, but the thing is, I, every time I do that, I put it into a library, so I get the most use out of, you know, possible out of it. So um, for each project, I have, you know, a bit I do, but um, I love not, you know, I have a lot of clients who've kind of seen the stuff I've done, they go, well, I want a big old city street, you know? And I'm like, and I'll, I'll give you a, a discount if I can just use stuff I already have. And they go, oh, yeah, you know, whatever, as long as it looks cool. I go, cool, awesome, okay. Uh, let's play with some Legos. And um, then we just, you know, build a new, couple new buildings to kind of give it a different vibe or something. But usually it's like, that's, that's what they want. So 
Um, so yeah, well, it looks like we are drastically over time, I think, so I'm gonna close everything. Thank you. Eventually. Okay.